from Asian countries. So we would like to welcome one and all for this very important session, which is global food and nutritional security and sustainable development through major and minor pulses. I should mention that this is the first time that the Academy is organizing such an event as a part of that World Food Prize Foundations program. The Academy is very excited to organize this session in collaboration with Indian Council of Agricultural Research, International Crop Research Institute for the Semi-Arid Tropics, International Center for Agriculture Research and Dryland, for Dryland Agriculture, and the World Wedge. Thanks to the Honorable President of National Academy of Agriculture Sciences, Dr. Mohopatra, for all your kind support and guidance to organize this program. And also the secretaries, especially Professor Casey Wansal, for organizing, co-convening this session and for all your support. And also Dr. P.K. Joshi, the Secretary of National Academy of Agriculture Sciences, the Vice President and the Executive Council of the National Academy of Agriculture Sciences. We are also thankful to the Directors General and senior leadership of Indian Council of Agriculture Research, including Dr. Himanshu Pathak, DGICR, who could not join this meeting because of some other engagement, but he has sent his best wishes to this program. Also, we are very much excited to have Dr. Sanjeev Gupta, ADG Oil Seed and Pulses from the ICR. We are thankful to DG ICRISAT, Dr. Jackie Hughes, Deputy Director General Research, Dr. Arvind Kumar from ICRISAT, DG ICARDA, Mr. Ali Abu Saba, and also Dr. Shiv Kumar, Regional Director from ICARDA, DG The World West, Dr. Marco Boprais, and Regional Director Dr. Ram Nair for all their support and cooperation to co-organize this meeting. Now a bit about this event. As we know that like every year, the World Food Prize Foundation organized or is organizing the 2022 Borlaug International Dialogue in this week and the next week. This year's theme is feeding a fragile world. And in this year, they are focusing on the nexus of agriculture, food security, and climate change, addressing adaptation and mitigation solutions to reach the sustainable development goals by 2030. At present, the world is facing triple threat, and this includes COVID, conflict, and the climate change. And these embodies the multiple challenges the global food system is facing now and will be, is unfortunately, is we anticipate that in future as well. So the 2022 Borlaug International Dialogue is expected to address scalable solutions for adaptation and mitigation to limit planetary warming below 1.5 degrees Celsius and achieving the SDGs. The F World Food F Prize Foundation provided National Academy of Agriculture Sciences an opportunity to host this important workshop on global food and nutritional security and sustainable development uh, through major and minor pulses. We are thankful to the World Food Prize Foundation and its leaders. Now, NAS, National Academy of Agriculture Sciences, selected this topic mainly because of the importance of the pulses crops in India, many countries in Asia, and Sub-Saharan Africa. Although cereals are important crops for providing calories, but pulse crops play a very important role for both food and nutrition security. Furthermore, pulses crops, they also contribute to sustainable development, especially as they play an important role in saving water footprints and also very adaptable for the changing climatic conditions. In this context, India is a success story, and until recently we had its Director General, Dr. Mohopatra sir, and his team that ICR played a very important role in enhancing crop productivity, crop production of pulses during last 10 years. Now, India is producing about 26 million ton pulses. And if you would like to see the data, 3 million tons have been added during last five years and about 9 million tons have been added in last 10 years. Thanks to the technology, policy interventions, and partnership, of ICR with international organizations like ICRISAT, ICARDA, the World Wedge, and others. Therefore, National Academy of Agriculture Sciences is hosting this session with the major players in the pulse crops, and we are very excited to have all of you in this meeting. I saw several senior names who are participating in this meeting, including Dr. Anpam Verma, Dr. Masood Ali, Dr. Adhyay, many other senior people. I cannot mention all the names, but we are very much excited to have you all in this important meeting. 
those of you who do not know nas because some people they are outside india very briefly nas is a major think tank for agriculture research and development in india the academy's role is to provide a forum to agriculture scientists to deliberate on important issues of agriculture research education extension and present views of the scientific community as a policy inputs to the planners decision and opinion makers at various levels the academy publishes policy papers based on the recommendations emerging out of the scientific programs like this one organized by the academy the academy also initiated a process to identify some important recommendations made in these policy papers and formulate projects to development to develop implementable action plan and the academy has so far published more than 100 policy papers that are used by icr and policy makers we would like to avail this opportunity to thank our honorable president dr mohopatra for his leadership to nas as its president we are very excited to have very eminent speakers not only from india which includes dr sanjeev gupta who is well known scientist and policy maker and oil seed pulses crop but we also have ekarda dg with us mr ali abusawa and research program director from ikrisat dr son moyes regional director from the world west dr ram nayar so i'm sure that we are going to have very exciting session and now without taking any further time i would like to invite our honorable president of national academy of agriculture science and former director general icr and secretary dear government of india dr mohopatra dr mohopatra sir floor is yours please and please join me in welcoming dr mohopatra from the session okay uh thank you very much uh, dr rajiv um let me extend a very warm welcome to each one of you uh, to this uh, very very important deliberation uh, on global food and nutrition security sustainable development through major and minor pulses uh thanks to dr rajiv varshney to start with because he is the brain behind made this decision uh, to have this in collaboration with world food prize foundation and thanks to dr k c bansal secretary of the national academy of agricultural sciences who worked in tandem with uh, professor rajiv varshney who is the also the foreign secretary of the national academy of agricultural sciences uh, to uh, design this program in detail uh, and uh, work in the direction of having a very very fruitful session today contacting different experts inviting them and uh, in fact uh, uh, we are extremely happy that uh, you know we have with us today uh, dr uh, mr ali abu saba uh, dg ikada uh, with us and uh, uh, of course uh, dr jacqueline hughes was invited uh, uh, dg krisat was invited but we are happy uh, to have uh, uh, dr son mays uh, who is uh, with us who is uh, going to actually uh uh deliberate uh, on various aspects of what ikrisat is doing its contribution towards uh you know a kind of revolution that we have experienced uh in india uh in pulses production uh of course we have with us uh, our own uh, adg assistant director general uh, dr sanjeev gupta uh, who has been actually a pulses breeder Uh, has uh, many many significant contributions to make uh, who has uh, uh, in fact made in the past and he is with us uh, he is uh, going to make a presentation uh, on uh, uh, the kind of developments which have uh, taken place uh, during past 5 6 years uh, and uh, uh, bringing in in the process uh, a revolution in pulses production uh, we have with us fortunately uh uh dr ram nair uh, uh from world vegetable center uh his uh, rich experience again would help us to learn uh, 
uh, uh, how things are happening at the world ways uh, and in addition to the experience of ICADA uh, and ICRISAT. Uh, so, so we have uh, these learned speakers uh, with us, four of them with us uh, to uh, throw light on various aspects of pulses, major or minor, and tell us uh, where we are, how we are going to uh, move further, uh, and then move in the direction of food and nutrition security. Uh, Dr. Rajiv has already given uh, the background, uh, but very importantly, let me say a few words and before I, I invite Dr. Gupta. Uh, pulses, as it was rightly said, uh, has been a very, very important component of our food system, uh, more so in, in the context of India, uh, because uh, a large uh, section of our population being vegetarian. Uh, uh, so, so they largely depend on uh, the pulses uh, as a protein source. Uh, whether it is a vegetarian population or non-vegetarian population that is a material because uh, from time immemorial, uh, the pulses have been, uh, uh, they have remained uh, mainstay of uh, our uh, food system. And in fact, along with the cereals, pulses are usually uh, consumed. Uh, uh, in a, it's a major diet, uh, uh, part of our major diet. Uh, so, so, uh, uh, so the International Year of Pulses and subsequently the kind of focus which was uh, brought and government of India working uh, uh, very uh, sincerely uh, and consciously to increase production. Uh, uh, that has really uh, brought rich dividends and Dr. Gupta would certainly make uh, a presentation and highlighting what all uh, could happen uh, and how things happen and what are the factors which contributed. In fact, National Academy of Agricultural Sciences uh, had a brainstorming session uh, on uh, sustaining this growth that we have uh, realized in recent times in India uh, uh, further uh, by uh, following a certain path. And what could be the elements there? What could be the factors which can contribute further in sustaining this growth in pulses production? That was deliberated. And I believe uh, you know, uh, those uh, kind of uh, policy uh, guidelines and prescriptions uh, would help us further uh, in uh, moving forward with regard to pulses production. Not only production, how to increase consumption. That's also very important, not only in India, at the global level. And production and consumption have to increase in tandem. Uh, so uh, Indian consumption uh, is falling short of what is actually recommended uh, with regard to the uh, uh, um, uh, amount of uh, pulses that is to be consumed per day, uh, the per capita consumption. And similarly, uh, at a global level, uh, the consumption uh, has to pick up. Then how do we really promote that unless we have a great deal of awareness created? Uh, at the same time, uh, with regard to climate resilience, with regard to water footprints, the chemical footprints, and all that that we talk about uh, in the context of sustainable uh, production system, pulses stand out, and they are crops which are being considered uh, under the uh, 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 ecological uh, benefits uh, that accrue uh, from agriculture, and also uh, the ecosystem services which are delivered. Uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 in right earnest, uh, we must be actually working on this and promoting this uh, so that the ecological and the ecosystem benefits which that we uh, derive from pulses by growing pulses, that should be actually mainstream and taken advantage of. So that is the kind of message. The soil fertility, uh, how it improves, uh, the nitrogen fixation that takes place, and so on and so forth. So quite a large number of benefits that we can derive from uh, pulses, in addition to the nutrition, nutrition security that we talk about. Uh, at the global level, uh, this uh, you know, awareness uh, must be there, and it has to be actually further uh, you know, uh, enhanced. In that context, uh, this collaboration uh, between the National Academy of Agricultural Sciences uh, and the World Food Prize Foundation is praiseworthy 
And I take this opportunity to sincerely thank Dr. Rajiv Garshni uh, for making this happen, uh, talking to World Food Prize Foundation that how we can collaborate and to, to deliberate on such an important topic. And that's how we are here. And um, I'm sure at the global level, there will be uh, uh, you know, a kind of uh, uh, further action uh, based on what we deliberate today, based on what we actually bring out in the form of recommendations or prescriptions, uh, you know, uh, um, I believe that would be taken note of. And uh, we together at the global level can uh, make pulses, pulses cultivation uh, uh, more popular and also consumption of pulses uh, enhanced uh, in order to address uh, the food and nutrition uh, security issues uh, as well as uh, the ecosystem issues uh, that we confront with. Uh, with this uh, brief uh, note here at this point in time, because time, my time is off, and I'm sure uh, we'll have a very, very rich uh, kind of uh, learnings uh, from uh, these uh, presentations which are going to happen. Without taking any more time, uh, since uh, Dr. Himansu Pathak, I don't know, Dr. Pathak, you have joined? Uh, he was in another meeting, so uh, I'm not sure whether he'll be able to join. So without uh, taking any more time, let me uh, invite uh, the first uh, speaker uh, of today, uh, Dr. Sanjeev Gupta, uh, Assistant Director General, Oil Seed and Pulses, Indian Council of Agriculture Research, uh, New Delhi, uh, to uh, go ahead with the presentation. So Dr. Gupta uh, has been a ardent researcher he has been working in this arena of pulses, has reached experience, several varieties to his credit, and I'm sure uh, you know, it will be a very meaningful presentation. Dr. Gupta, and in fact, all the speakers, I had a request, uh, if you can uh, you know, confine your presentations to the time allocated, that would be great. So, so Dr. Gupta, please, please, uh, floor is yours. Thank you, Honorable President of National Academy of Agricultural Sciences. Thank you, World Food Prize Foundation. Thank you, National Academy of Agriculture Sciences. Uh, let me at the outset uh, pay my great respect and reverence to all World Food Prize winners who have made this world, most part of the, most part of the world, food secure. In 1965-67, there was a acute shortage in food grains in India. And our parents used to tell that there was a call from the leadership. And they used to observe the fast once in a week. Today, India is the second largest food producer in the world. India's food security program is largest in the world. The subsidized food for two thirds of the population is being given. And that uh, the wheat, it is from the 2.5 cent rise 3.8 cent and the total cost of this program is 20 billion dollar per annum that is equivalent to 3.4 percent gdp during pandemic india arranged the another uh, program the pradhan mantri uh, Gra gramid vikas anna yojana and in that yojana also india arranged to free ration to 900 million population and addition to that they have provided one kg of the pulses free for nutritional security of lactating mothers, pregnant women, and children, which are below 14 years. So I think this is the largest food security program in the world. Thanks to the government, thanks to the, our people who have made uh, glory in the green revolution and who made the country the surplus in the food. Pulses are the climate and nutritional smart crops. And these are vital for defeating malnutrition and sustainability of Indian agriculture. India is working on 12 crops. Six are now major crops and rest six are the minor crops. And realizing the importance of these pulses, the International, or International United Nations Conference, they have announced 2016 as the International Year of Pulses. India has witnessed the pulse revolution in this country. India is the largest producer, about uh, 28 
percent of the global production of the pulses comes from India. India is the largest consumer. Uh, 39 percent of the total bird pulses are consumed in India. India is the largest processor importer, and I think India is the most important in the pulses program. Pulses somehow lagged behind during the course of agriculture evolution, but in recent year, India witnessed a phenomenal growth from 14 million tons, which were in the 2009 and 10, and which was stagnated for a decade. Now we have reached to 27.69 million ton, nearly double the production on the basis of the 2009 and 10. And this kind of uh, revolution has been never ever in the history of agricultural development in this country, in any crop. I think this has been due to our the researchers, our the farmers, policymakers, all have contributed significantly in the pulse revolution of the country. The major drivers of the pulse revolutions which we can identify, it is access of the seed, good quality seed and the fast paced development of the varieties. Then the price support system, the national food security program, particularly the mission which government of India has learned on the pulses and several other schemes of the government for the, for the agriculture that has also helped in bringing revolution in the country. And that has uh, impacted in increasing the availability of pulses from 45 per gram per capita per day in 2015-16. It has reached now to 52 gram uh, per capita per day availability. Dependency on import has reduced significantly from 6.61 million ton to 2.4 million ton. The rate of current uh, growth rate, it is 5.1%, which is really enormous. If it continues, we will touch 46 million ton by 2030. But for achieving the goal, achieving the target for the self-sufficiency, if we have the growth rate of 1.57, I think this can be easily achieved. And this could be done on the backdrop that our pulses has a great shift in production ecology. From North India, 1971-75, it was equal proportion of 11 million hectare. Uh, the pulses were grown. Now it is shifted to the central and South India, and it has drastically reduced in the North India. This shift was very conspicuous in the chickpea. When the chickpea was shifted almost from North to central and South, and uh, from 4.98 million hectare, it has now gone to the 2.4 million hectare in central south. And similarly, uh, from the 2.51 uh, central India, it has reached uh, more than 7 million hectare in the central and south. So, so this shift was very conspicuous. And because of that also, we have achieved pulses evolution. We can understand the, how much the resilience in our technology, our programs were there. The varietal uh, development program in India was, was fast paced during 2014 22. Uh, about uh, 1100 pulse varieties are available in India. And out of these, 30% varieties was released in the last seven years. So, varietal development has at the fast pace. And we have reduced the crop duration in many crops. We brought disease resistance. We worked on biofortifications. We brought the varieties for the machine harvestable. However, the historically the genetic gain of pulses has been only 0.6 percent per year. We need to increase by one percent per year if we have to achieve the goal. We worked for the resilience breeding, and out of uh, 313 varieties released during 2014-21, 270 were the climate resilient varieties. These are very import, important because challenges are severe. Over 85% of pulses grown in the red fed areas. Terminal drought and heat are very crucial. Fusionium build is widely spreading. Pot borer is continuing to create menace. And now the emerging pest are 
Otlai and Marupa, they are continuing threat. So on that background also, we are working for developing varieties for abiotic and biotic resistance. India is suitably harnessing the power of genomics and last decade, we can acknowledge the decade of legume genomics. The first trap genome of PSNP was published in 2011. And subsequently with the help of the, uh, our CGIR Institute, with the help of other institutes, we could have the draft genome of several pulses. Draft genome of uh, Lethyrus, it is also under uh, underway. I think we'll have uh, this year, the draft genome sequencing of Lethyrus. Can you imagine such a huge genome, uh, about uh, six giga base pair? It is three times more than maize, seven times more than tomato, and two times more than human. And this genome has, the people have taken uh, a call to uh, sequence this genome. And this is very important crop. It is really a climate a smart crop. And uh, it's really, it will be a great achievement in, in our future breeding programs. But the most important crop that is lentil, we need to sequence. I think global efforts are required. And all of us should make efforts to sequence lentil. It is a very, very nutritious legume. And uh, the genome is really huge. But uh, I know the cost of sequencing is reduced. Uh, it was one time, it was a $1 million sequencing a genome. Now in the few thousand dollars, it can be sequenced. So it is a call from us to sequence the lentil, very important crop. It is very important. The breeding resources will be available for our scientists. As I told, the lentil is a very nutritious uh, grain legume. And it is regarded as one of the five healthiest food of the world. And uh, our, uh, one of our students, when he was pursuing the PhD program at North Dakota University, he came out uh, with a very good publication uh, revealing that the rich, rich, uh, this lentil is a rich source of folate. It has five times more folate than any other legume crops. But in India, 15 to 20 percent population uh, particularly our lactating uh, mothers and the pregnant demons and the children who are below five years, they are having severe folate deficiency. So 15 to 20 percent of the population in India is suffering from uh, this folate uh, deficiency. So my request is, uh, I think, uh, who, who's over the lentil worker, kindly take up this crop in a big agenda to improve much more status of the land, uh, this uh, folate, because health comes from farm, not from pharmacy. This is the, my point of uh, uh, message to lentil workers. This uh, malnutrition uh, in across the world is really serious. Nearly more than thirty thousand deaths every year is uh, because of the malnutrition. It is equivalent to one death per second. In India, 800 million people are malnourished. More than 50% pregnant women are anemic. More than 80 million people are suffering from protein, calorie malnutrition. And recently, the zinc has uh, received a global attention because the four lakh children in the world, they are dying because of the zinc deficiency uh, next to the vitamin E deficiency. So we have taken agenda to biofortify our legumes, which are uh, which can make our population nutritionally secure, and our biofortified traits are uh, becoming streamlining in our breeding program. We have released two varieties which are having uh, more than uh, the threshold level of the iron and the zinc, and few breeding lines are in the pipeline. I think we'll come with the more and more biofortified legumes and that would be the part of our nutritional security program and the government ambitious program of the national nutrition mission, Rashtriya Poshan Abhiyan. 2014, Honorable Prime Minister made a call to us that we should focus to increase the protein content per se in the legume. Thanks to our chickpea workers, they have come out with the one variety IPC 2005 that's 62. It is having more than 26% of the protein content. And uh, our efforts are there 
to improve uh, some of the linkage directs are there in our uh, reading lines, like heat subsequently built and grain appearance is not good. I think selection pressure is going on and will come out with the new varieties, which are having high in the protein content in chickpea, because chickpea is the pulse which has been included in our midday meal program and in our rationing program. We have also worked in developing machine harvestable pulses, and that has been very important because uh, uh, not only uh, this machine harvestable pulses, you can imagine 2.25 ton of chickpea we can harvest in 75 minutes, which takes three to four days by three to four laborers uh, for harvesting such kind of the chickpea. So machine brings ease in cultivation, machine saves time, labor, and machine makes the crop remunerative. We have released four varieties which are machine harvestable in chickpea. I think uh, our ICRISAT has also done a wonderful job in this, and they have also cooperated in giving some of the breeding line to us. And we have also developed three machine harvestable moonbeam, which is now with the farmers. India has also worked on pigeon pea hybrids, particularly with the collaboration of ECRISAC. And the, it is only three decades of the hybrid research in pigeon pea. The first hybrid, it was ICPH8, it was released in 1991. And since then, uh, that uh, GMS based hybrid was not popular. So we could develop the CMS based hybrid. And recently, the government of India uh, made uh, a call to us that we should increase the area under the hybrid pigeon pea program. And I understand that hybrid and heterosis can be realized only in a well-managed condition. In that rain-fed condition, the heterosis cannot be realized. So what we made a plan, we have to organize 5,000 demonstrations, large demonstrations, and we'll invite all uh, private partners to see that the potential of our hybrids. And then I think the pigeon pea program, hybrid program will go on the next uh, step. India has also done on the GM uh, pulses. Four GM products are also available at the advanced stage in different labs, but regulatory restrictions are there for large scale field trials. Recently, government of India provided exception and exemption to the gene edited plants, particularly the event of SDN1 and SDN2, which are free from exogenous DNA, I think this will accelerate the varietal development program uh, in our uh, pulses also because it has demonstrated potential in wheat, barley, potato, and lettuce. And uh, some results are promising in rice and maize. So I think that will be the great help to us to accelerate the varietal development program. The whole revolution uh, in the pulses, it was uh, basically the seed centric whether food, nutrition, resilience, income needs, all were around the seed. The SRR, seed replacement rate, has been increased considerably uh, from 30 to 61%. Varietal replacement rate in some of the crops like chickpea, moon bean, and lentil, it is more than 80%. And government of India made a special provision to create 150 seed hubs worth of 450 crores, and now 1,17,000 quintal breeder seeds are available in these seed hubs. I think these are some of the efforts which has improved the access of the quality seeds, but more and more innovative models are still required to cater the seed needs of the farmer. The production environment has also improved, improved because uh, if you see that out of 137 pulse growing districts, 87 districts show 20 to 60% sulfur deficiency. 50% pulse growing districts so zinc deficiency. And government of India through national security food mission, a birth of 11,000 crore provided inputs to improve the production environment. And that has helped in realizing the productivity of most of the crops. Pulses have moved to non-traditional analysis. And I think I would quote the two examples, but is, uh, one is summer moon bean. The area is increased from 6 million hectare in 2010-11 to 1.3 million hectare now. The area under Ravi rice fallow pulses, particularly black gram cultivation in coastal Andhra Pradesh, 
Mumbai in southern Karnataka and Kaveri Delta of Tamil Nadu. These are some of the niches that uh, pulses has reached. And not only that, the large rice fallow area is in the eastern India, particularly from Gauhati to Tura in Meghalaya. Uh, 11 million hectare area is there and satellite imaginary shows that uh, nearly 100 days uh, moisture regime is there. So lentil and chickpea crops can be successfully grown in that area. So our programs are there, particularly the targeted rice fellow area program in the, under the Department of Agriculture and Corporations. And those efforts are go going on. We have to realize the potential of the rice fellow in the country. Nearly 1 million hectare area will be replaced by pulses and particularly some of the intercropping systems, some of the replacements are there. And Maharashtra, I quote one example, the soya bean intercropped with vision pea. It has become very remunerative, very popular among the farmers, and it has replaced many crops and the pulses uh, bent into, and that is the important component, pulses are important component for the crop diversification. In the month of August, the Honorable Prime Minister called us and uh, ha having a meeting on diversi diversification of Indian agriculture. And uh, the diversification campaign has been launched and we are uh, going to target 2 million hectare additional area under pulses and some in oil seed under diversification program. There were several government schemes and that has been definite role in the government programs in pulses portfolio not only the increase in MSP or national food security missions. There are several programs which brought the changes in our pulse production. And there are new programs this year, uh, the government has lens and pulses are integral part in each and every program of them. The Indian Pulse Research Program has a, bio, has a very big uh, network. Uh, one national institute, Indian Institute of Pulse Research, it's four regional stations, four ACRIPS, and more than 350 scientists are committed for nutritional and food security through pulses. With these few words, thank you all for your patience listening. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gupta. And uh, you have uh, finished uh, well in time. Um, highlighting on various aspects. I'll not go into those details now. So time is uh, most precious for us. So what I would uh, do is I would request Dr. Sean Mays, um, Ikrisad to make his uh, point of points of view, present his uh, viewpoints. Uh, floor is yours, Dr. Mays. Can you see that? Yes. Please, please yes. go ahead. Please okay, go great. Ahead. Thank you. Uh, you can make your slide mode show if you can. Presentation mode, please. Um, where, yeah, where? Is that? I can't really see what you're seeing. Uh, no, I can see what you're saying. Can you, can you uh, go to the slide mode show? Right? Yeah. So slide show mode. Yeah, you go on that on the slide on the right hand side, the bottom. And do you bottom, see the there is a screen show yeah. there. You click I on this. I think that's what I did, but um, maybe not coming through. It's okay then, I think. We can uh, it's okay. Okay. Please go ahead. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, to the Honourable President and Secretary for the invitation to give a, a little bit of information, a little bit of a talk in, in this workshop. Uh, I'm relatively new at ICRISAT, so I'd have to start by saying if, if there are any mistakes, they're mine. Uh, and I'm sure Rajiv can probably help if we get stuck. Mm -hmm. What I thought would be useful is, is really just to talk a little, about, a little bit about ICRISAT's involvement in terms of minor and major pulses in both India and also in, in Africa. And to say a little bit to some extent about how we've reorganized to try and 
uh, push things forward. So, I mean, you'll all be familiar with ICRISAT, or most people will be, and our vision is very much a prosperous, food secure, resilient drylands in Asia and Africa. And particularly the mission is to reduce poverty, hunger, malnutrition, environmental degradation in the drylands. Essentially, our values are very much about collaboration and working together. In terms of where we are in Africa. Um, Excuse me, Son, I assume you are moving your slides, but we are not able uh, to the slides moving. We are having the first slide yet on that. Okay. So that's not, you're not seeing any movement. No, no, we are still on your title please, slide. Please on share and again, again share because. Yeah, I'll do it again. Yeah. And you click once on the slide after you share, then you automatically it will move on to the next. Yeah, but that is not happening. And some participant, they are also creating some new sense by drawing on the slide. So we request not to do any of these things on the slides. They did in the Dr. Gupta's presentation also. Okay, can you see that? Yes, if you go there. Yeah, maybe I'll just keep it in this mode and that way it should at least go forward. Yes, now we can see the next slide, yes, yes. So, sorry, so in terms of um, our involvement in, in Africa, we will have two main regions, which are East and Southern Africa and Western uh, Central Africa. And we have five, stations within uh, the eastern side and three stations within the western side but we actually carry out um, multi-locational trials in about 13 countries in in uh, east africa and quite a range of countries in west africa as well so it's quite a it's a quite a wide eco ecological uh, and um, uh, climate difference for, for the materials that we grow. And we, we have the six mandates of which three are um, legumes, particularly, uh, well, essentially legumes, particularly pigeon pea, um, chickpea, and groundnut. We have reorganized uh, recently, and, and one of the reasons for doing this was really to try to integrate as far as we can um, in terms of trying to bring the disciplines together. Um, so I look after accelerated crop improvement, but there are programs looking at enabling systems transformation, particularly socioeconomics, uh, and also resilient farm systems and food systems, which are very much about taking a landscape view. We also have a cross-cutting set up so that we have representation in each of those major regions. And the idea really is very much to have everybody involved as far as we possibly can in design of programs. Some simple things um, that, that have come out of that sort of approach is very much looking to provide breeding targets, and those targets are focused around particular market segments or, or economic, uh, ecological zones, with the preferences coming from the farmers to make sure that the targets are always towards what the farmer, farmers themselves are looking for. Um, I'll just talk a little bit about the um, resources we have and what we've done. So obviously one of the biggest resources we have is the gene bank. In the case of uh, legumes, we have quite significant uh, numbers of accessions available, freely available. Um, and we also have quite a reasonable number of accessions in West Africa where they can also be accessed there. Um, in terms of the numbers of samples distributed to date over the last uh, 50 years or so, Again, it's really, uh, it's really quite large numbers, evenly split between global requests and, and things that have been used within the ICRASAT programs. Uh, this genomics, pre-breeding and bioinformatics, obviously Rajiv uh, did an enormous amount of work and, and produced a lot of results in terms of the genome side of things, in terms of understanding what's there at the basic level. And some of that work has been continuing in terms of developing marker sets that we can use for breeding QC or for seedlot QCs to try and make sure of purity. 
and we are directly using markers that have been developed through those approaches within the breeding program. Um, recently, we've just developed or, or completed some high quality uh, additional genomes, uh, and they, particularly in the case of groundnut, will, will feed into some of the breeding programs for particular diseases and, and problems which can't be addressed directly within the cultivated germ plasm. The breeding program has obviously been <clears throat> quite successful in terms of developing varieties. Uh, we've developed 184 chickpea varieties, which have been uh, spread to 26 countries, 123 pigeon pea in 19 countries, and 245 groundnut in about 39 countries. Um, and, and that continues on a regular basis, particularly with shifting towards using hybrids in, in pigeon pea and uh, that is having quite a good effect in terms of actually increasing yields and uh, taking advantage of the available good locations. Um, as has been mentioned already, I mean, there's, there are always significant issues in terms of uh, disease and crop protection is one of the key areas, both in terms of the gene bank, but also in terms of bringing in, having identified markers to some of these traits, some of these resistance traits, bringing those markers and genes into the breeding of germplasm. And also there's a, a, a good uh, crop entomology going up, being done at the moment in terms of Icrosats, working, again, working with collaborators, but in terms of rearing some of these pests and then looking at how you phenotype. And that's starting to produce some quite interesting results in terms of tolerance in some uh, some areas. The crop physi physiology does, does a number of things, but one of the things we're, we're trying to use it for is to be able to predict regions uh, and temporal times in terms of when to plant, what to plant, and coming from that to develop um, more specific breeding objectives that fit within the mapping process. But we're also doing quite a lot of phenotyping, both in terms of aerial drone phenotyping and multispectral cameras, uh, but as well things like near infrared, where we can look at protein content, lipid content actually in seed. Uh, and one example in um, computer, uh, computer tomography is actually using um, computer tom tomography and AI to work out shelling percentages within uh, groundnut, and that's actually used routinely now. In the longer term, um, there are going to be things that we can't deal with um, in terms of particular challenges, and that's where really uh, genetic engineering and particularly gene editing will come in. And, and gene editing having been accepted in India for type 1 and type 2 events, I think is going to be an important part of breeding. It will be an integrate, integrated into main breeding programs, but those traits may be things that we really have to be uh, working at, at a different level because we can't find the resistance elsewhere or in relatives. The final bit, which perhaps is much less important in terms of uh, India, because uh, there's a very good network in India, is seed production. In Africa, it's, it's a lot more difficult in many ways. Uh, and we're, we're looking at different models to try to generate uh, breeders' seed and, and for generation, early generation seed. Really, it's a way to, to about, be able to supply these materials to the people who need them. I think uh, harvesting chickpea has already been mentioned, certainly mecha mechanized harvesting, which potentially has enormous benefits. Um, and similar use of harvesting and, and basic technologies could also have quite a big impact in terms of how those, not only how those uh, cultivars are bred, what they're bred for, but also how uh, efficient farming could become and taking away a lot of the drudgery that's there. Um, what I will do is talk just briefly about a few examples. One thing um, to bear in mind, and, and you're obviously all aware of that, is that the crop breeding improvement is only one aspect. The other aspect is, is, is how do you work with the agricultural system, with the target environment, to try and have other interventions which help in terms of realizing yield and decreasing costs. 
and there are a whole range of these and, and ICRASAT really works from the landscape level. Um, and I'll give a few examples, of some work there. Um, so this is an example of a, a program that's been in ICRASAT, um, looking at pigeon pea and really looking at the potential to increase uh, the efficiency of, of, of and the yield of pigeon pea. And this is really an, an example where, it, yes, it's certainly true that new germplasm matters, but addressing many of the other issues is also really critical in terms of realizing those yields. And I think that that one, one that aspect is, is going to be one of the key ones and very much goes hand in hand with crop improvement. And you can see that the yields have been uh, increased by this integrated approach. Another example, um, which is an interesting one, uh, uh, Professor Gupta has already mentioned using chickpea and rice fallows. And this is a, an example of a quite long-term program that ICRASAT has been involved in. And in this case, it, it's very much a case of understanding what's in the field and looking in this case at intervening for a micronutrient uh, approach. And that has made fairly significant differences in terms of overall yields for a second crop. Um, so these sorts of, in, again, these sorts of integrated approaches are really quite key. And to some extent, the breeding uh, will start to move a little bit more towards specific environments and specific agroecologies. Uh, Icrasat was involved in Myanmar um, chickpea work, and this was a fairly significant uh, effort along with collaborators. And really, it made a, a significant difference in terms of production and also, um, as you can see from, from the, the uh, numbers, 96% of the chickpea area in 2017-18 was developed through Icrasat DAR partnerships and obviously, again, with um, collaborators. I'll take, I'll just give you a few examples of um, Africa in terms of our work there. And here's a, a figure which basically shows how many varieties have been released in this case in East Africa. There's a reasonable um, production level in East Africa. Um, and we're producing and breeding in that region as well as testing in, in, in 13 countries to try and identify the best place for many of these um, pulses. Uh, chickpea in Ethiopia. Um, this is a, again a fairly long term program. 10 improved varieties have been released between 2007 and uh, 2018. Uh, and it, the adoption was high, partly through collaborative work with the national government and partners. And also overall, the, the average productivity essentially doubled over that period of time. So these sorts of comprehensive approaches with germplasm, but also obviously looking at local factors in terms of how to improve uh, production can have quite significant impacts. And just really to, to move towards an end, this is an example in pigeon pea uh, trends in Malawi. This is a, in Malawi, uh, pigeon pea has, has really increased quite rapidly in terms of um, the amount of land that's being used for it. There is an increase in, uh, in productivity per hectare. Um, it's still starting from a pretty low level, so there's still a lot of improvement that can be made. But pigeon pea has essentially become, become quite an important crop in Malawi and, and is picking up in other countries as well. So if I were to try to conclude, I mean, I think, um, as has been said, um, legumes are a critical part of future systems. And the nitrogen fixation is a key part of that, but obviously because of the, the high protein content, human and animal nutrition is extremely important as a component. Um, for ICRISAT, really at the core of our approach is collaboration and, and multidisciplinary teams. There's some incredibly powerful technology um, being produced and, and, and really now generating enormous amounts of data. But clearly we have to translate that through into making impacts in the field. And, and that really needs a very, very integrated approach. Uh, the landscape level, and I think particularly um, the system level that we work at, I think is, is going to be really quite uh, critical because 
no two places are identical. And I think we can um, essentially develop approaches which uh, are, are sort of templates that could be put into certain areas, but clearly they have to be adjusted. So in addition to, to advanced breeding for uh, agroecosystems and market segments, um, we also focus on yield in, in a more holistic way. So agronomy management, uh, water management in particular, are one of the key things in terms of sustainability, in terms of being able to keep these yields up. Um, and overall, I think, I think one of the things, or one of potentially one of the problems with the, the Green Revolution was it was very much taken as a, as a one size fits all. And, and that clearly isn't entirely true. Uh, so we need to work with common tools and approaches, but they have to be adapted and they have to be in context for it to be sustainable. Uh, and I think that will be one of the key challenges because it, it, it means we're dealing with a lot more complexity. Um, I think as has been said, it's, it's also not good enough to work just on the supply side because um, in the end, it's going to be demand that will drive the need, the, the requirements for production and and that will also drive uh farmers growing these things but also then uh it will increase the wealth of those farming communities if it's done in a way that makes sure that the farmers receive a good proportion of any increase uh so thank you very much i mean we're, ex we're extremely grateful to, to all funders collaborators and and, and people we've worked with particularly the local organizations in India where essentially a large part of that work is done. And then we're trying to translate that in many ways to Africa where the situation is perhaps uh, certainly logistically more difficult. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mayes. Uh, excellent presentation on Ikrisad's various activities on uh, legume uh, research uh, and development as well. Uh, the kind of uh, revolution uh, in pigeon pea, in chickpea, uh, to which Secret has contributed uh, in India and globally that you have highlighted. So uh, I'll summarize at the end, but uh, uh, there are messages in your concluding remarks, and uh, hopefully that would be also helpful. Uh, in moving forward. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Myers. Uh, now uh, time is uh, exactly, we are uh, on the dot on time actually. So we'll move on to the next presentation uh, by Dr. Ali Abusaba, Mr. Ali Abusaba. He himself says, uh, don't put doctor. Uh, you know, so thank you very much for joining Ali and uh, it has been always a pleasure to interact with you and uh, uh, providing ICADA's uh, contributions with regard to my major and minor pulses uh, to global agriculture in that context, and also in the process ensuring uh, food and nutrition security. Uh, we have been uh, you know, uh, greatly benefited uh, and continued uh, benefiting from ICADA's uh, efforts in India. So uh, welcome, Dr. Ali. Uh, rather, Mr. Ali, uh, to this program, and the floor is yours, please. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mohapatra. Uh, is, is the sound coming on okay? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. perfectly. All excellent, right. excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, and, uh, you know, Dr. Mohapatra, thank you for the very uh, generous and kind uh, presentation. You know, equally, uh, ECARDA appreciates the strong support that it has been receiving from India over the years. And of course, also from your wisdom and guidance as a board member of ECARDA uh, until recently. So really, I take the opportunity to appreciate that uh, strongly. Uh, so my second check is to make sure that uh, the slides are coming on okay. Slides are okay, but can you please again go to slideshow more? Yeah, I think there is a bit of a challenge there, uh, but uh, let's see. Uh, okay. <clears throat> okay, works well now, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity to be with you uh, today. It's really, uh, you know, a great pleasure because 
uh, there is a very important group of partners and key players uh, within the context of, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, pulse research, uh, which I think is a very essential piece of what we need to prepare, uh, you know, for uh, the future. Uh, you know, CARDA, as you all know, you know, provides innovative, uh, you know, climate smart and science-based solutions. Uh, that improve rural family farming and livelihoods in the dry regions across Africa, Asia, and the Middle East. And uh, within this uh, context, uh, I strongly believe that the pulses uh, and, and legumes uh, in general, uh, you know, will have a very important uh, part to play much more than it has uh, done in the past going into the future with the in ever increasing uh, challenges of the climate change. So uh, our target environments, uh, you know, is uh, mostly uh, uh, highlighted uh, on, on uh, the slide that you see, you know, um, two billion people living in that space, uh, projections that, uh, you know, drylands will make up more than 50% by the end of the century, and it accommodates almost one third, uh, you know, of the world uh, population. So, uh, you know, ICARDA, uh, as part of the one CGIR, has been working to, uh, you know, with other partners uh, to ensure that the priority areas uh, for the CG are also reflected in the region. And that has, uh, you, know, uh, you know, different components and different participation in, uh, you know, uh, some of those 27 initiatives, uh, of which six, uh, on top of that, there are also six regional initiatives. Uh, you know, there is the group, uh, six of them about genetic innovations uh, uh, in the portfolio in a variety of areas. You have the system transformation portfolio, about 12 uh, initiatives, and you have resilient agri-food systems in, in nine of them. And those uh, 27 are supplemented by the regional initiatives. Uh, some of them have a very regional focus. They are very complementary to the independent standalone initiatives, and they draw and leverage opportunities to bring in technologies for scaling in, in those uh, different um, areas. The greatest challenge that we're trying to address here is that uh, by the year 2050, we are expecting uh, our population to grow by almost 37%, reaching 9.2 billion people. And uh, food uh, production must really increase by 27%, uh, by, by, uh, by 60, more than 60%. So uh, this is happening at the time where the climate change is becoming more pronounced and uh, the resource use efficiency needs greater attention because with the negative impact of climate change, we are expecting some of the crop yields to fall by us as high as 25%. So, uh, you know, what this, uh, you know, makes is uh, really um, uh, an additional challenge on, uh, on everyone uh, that uh, to be able to uh, mobilize and leverage the science and innovations and the research that we do in uh, ways uh, that uh, can really uh, leverage on the technology and use it to produce uh, uh, more food, but with less, uh, uh, with less uh, uh, resource use. So um, what I would like <clears throat> to emphasize here is uh, the role of uh, the, uh, uh, hello? Hello? Yes. Please go ahead, please go ahead. Uh, my, my screen went black. Oh, but we are able to see. Okay, very good. Yeah, yeah it's moving. <laughs> so let me, let me, let me continue that. Um, so the, the issue is looking at a model that is more sustainable, uh, you know, for the production systems, uh, looking at uh, the whole, uh, you know, uh, process from the crop selection, uh, the variety suitability, uh, looking at the agronomy and the farming practices, and then also at the post harvest. So the whole value chain with a view uh, to making sure that the production systems are economic, economically viable, but also, uh, you know, uh, eco ecologically sustainable that is uh, less land uh, you know more crop per crop higher input uh, per unit less consumption of energy and hopefully uh, less uh, carbon emissions 
So uh, when we uh, um, look at uh, the uh, legumes across the globe, we have uh, you know, uh, a significant uh, part of this uh, 3,500 varieties, almost 85 of them come uh, and have been released from by Icard and partners over the past uh, 10 years. My apology, my screen is freezing again. So, uh, and here uh, the approach has been to try to look at uh, higher productivity, uh, you know, higher adaptability, but also looking at the whole issue of nutrition so that we are able to leverage this uh, for better, not just more food secure world, but also uh, better and more nourished uh, smallholder farmers across, uh, across the world. So if I uh, take a quick uh, look at India in particular, and of course, you're all very familiar with this work. So I'll, I'll just pass on very quickly. Uh, uh, some of the examples, you know, enhancing food and nutrition security and improved livelihoods through intensification of rice uh, fallow systems using, you know, existing moistures. This is really a great opportunity for the CGIR at large because we are leveraging almost uh, 5 million hectares of rice plantations. And you know, in those instances where the rice goes fallow, then you're able to introduce, uh, for example, you know, uh, early maturing lentil varieties that brings in significant additional production, a, a very strong addition to the nutritional consumption of the, of the local population and overall improving health. So the whole uh, question around in, incentivization of non-paddy crops uh, in uh, RR uh, seed uh, mini kit program in Odisha, more recently, 2020 and 2021, the variety technology and seed uh, systems development for pulses in, in Odisha, 2016-2019, in, uh, 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 enhancing uh, pulses production for food and nutritional security and you know, improved livelihoods, and the list goes on. So uh, what we are trying to uh, really take is to take up the, uh, both in India and across the world, is to take and leverage these innovations and, uh, you know, take them across different scales and to different regions. And being able to take the technologies that have been developed in India or developed outside India and exchange in, in a two-way uh, process. This is uh, uh, actually resulting a significant uh, uptake of uh, innovative uh, you know, technologies that have been available for a long time, but with limited uptake. This is helping countries like Morocco, Egypt, Sudan, Ethiopia, uh, to actually take full advantage of the innovations that have been produced uh, and take them to scale. There is increased interest in uh, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, pulses and, and legumes in, in, in general both as feed and fodder and in many parts of the dryland crops and in countries where they have traditionally been producing high levels and for reasons, for a variety of reasons, their production has been going down over the past years. So uh, uh, within this uh, context, more examples, uh, you know, is the FPO uh, basis uh, hubs under the Odisha project, uh, uh, emphasis on uh, uh, participatory uh, variety of evaluations. Um, we have, uh, you know, seed multiplications. Uh, we have, uh, you know, a, a large number of uh, certified seeds uh, produced and significant number of, you know, capacity development and training uh, programs. Capacity development is actually a very essential uh, part of the, of the work we do in partnership with uh, all many of the participants in the conference and a very large number across India. India is privileged to have a very strong national uh, system with a, a large scale of research networks and partners that together with the CGIR are able to do significant and marvelous work uh, on the ground that is actually not available anywhere else uh, in the world, at least in terms of the scale and in terms of the, of the contribution of our national partners that are able to bring this uh, to the CGIR. So it's a very privileged partnership that uh, we are uh, really appreciating very much. Of course, within this context, it's important to emphasize the role of the Icarda Gene Bank, uh, uh, 155,000 accessions, uh, of which uh, uh, 65,000 are of different 
uh, you know, uh, 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 legumes, varieties, uh, and of course, uh, uh, wild uh, relatives. Uh, the ECARDA gene bank teams have uh, uh, developed this FIGS, uh, which is the focused identification of genetic uh, species, which is allowing us to be a lot more effective and efficient in the way we select and identify those uh, you know, genetic resources that can feed into the uh, you know, uh, breeding programs. Uh, I think uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Sanjeev had mentioned the work in India on the mechanically harvestable uh, pulses. I think also our uh, colleague from ICRISAT. This is gaining enormous interest across the world, not just in India. And the fact is the labor cost constitutes a very important challenge in actually expanding and scaling uh, you know, pulses in language. So with the focus on this work and ICARDA, Dr. Shiv Agriwal, and you know, before him, uh, you know, uh, 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 others, uh, uh, um, they have been working closely with the national system to uh, develop further these mechanically harvestable lentil varieties with taller stems. Introduction of mechanization could help a country like Morocco, for example, that is aiming to take almost 1 million hectare of conservation agriculture, introduction of legumes within that system can be transformational. Egypt in the new lands, they're learning from India's experience and they're trying to, together with our, uh, you know, legumes research teams, to move technologies across the globe. And of course, lessons learned from this are brought back into India and the learning process continues from there. I mentioned earlier the introduction of uh, uh, a lentil, uh, you know, short uh, lentil varieties in rice uh, fallows to, through, and this is allowing us to int intensify uh, the production system and no additional pressure on the water because it's moisture, residual moisture in the land, no additional clearance of land because it's a land that goes fallow in between uh, two rice crops. And of course, this requires interventions at along the whole value chain, looking at the seed production, the crop management, the value chains, and the consumption, and of course, uh, you know, the preference of the consumers. This uh, slide basically shows how the super early maturing lentil varieties are introduced between these two rice systems, Aman rice, the Boro rice, during the period from November until the end of January, which comes in extremely handy and is in making not just additional food, but also better nutrition. Uh, intercropping pulses, of course, uh, it allows us to diversify the production systems and this makes the system overall a lot more profitable from a farmer perspective. In, you know, with cereal systems, you can produce up to 38% more crops, almost 33 more uh, income at a farmer level and uh, using less uh, land by almost 23%. So it's, it's really win-win both for the environment, for the farmers and uh, for the economy. Uh, now, what is important here is to look at how you, uh, what would be the impact at scale uh, through the introduction of extra early biofortified lentil crops uh, for South Asia. You know, uh, you, know you look at it from, uh, you know, the, the experience in Bangladesh, in India, and in Nepal, and, you know, the whole, uh, you know, uh, technology has been significant in making benefits across uh, these environments. But it's also important to recognize there are significant opportunities for leveraging of digitalization, uh, you know, remote sensing and the whole uh, package of the agronomy that is needed uh, for uh, for the management of the crop. So it is clear, and I'm I'm here emphasizing the messaging that we need to take uh, to the World Food Prize. You know, they, uh, the pulses have significant opportunities to offer within the context of ever increasing climate change negative impacts, both in the area of food and feed. They can become a very important. Uh, uh, you know, uh, a player in the future markets up from the current levels of 17.4 billion, possibly up to 21.6 uh, 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 21 billion by 2030. And you can imagine, you can do the math and expect by the two year 2020, 50, uh, what will be uh, the impact. I can confirm to you that as far as ICARDA and the CG is concerned, we are waking, uh, making concerted effort to make sure that pulses have you know, continued uh, attention and opportunities for scaling uh, across the region. So uh, you know, in short and in summary, the integration of pulses 
is uh, really uh, in, in cereal based cropping system. It increases productivity, it increases, enhances returns, it improves the environment, it reduces uh, the uh, carbon emissions, it improves the resilience of livelihood at farmer levels and offers significant opportunities for social inclusion. Thank you for the opportunity to share some of our thoughts with you. I personally, I am personally committed to work with all of you, ICARDA, on behalf of ICARDA, our research teams, and also on behalf of the CGIR, because I also represent, uh, you, know, uh, you know, the CG group of centers that works in Siwana, and we, work, we will continue to work strongly with our partners in India uh, to make sure that there is a win-win situation for everyone. Thank you, Dr. Mohapatra, and thank you, Dr. Sanjeev and Rajiv and many others present on this call for the opportunity to address this August group. Thank you, once again. Thank you, thank you very much, Ali. Excellent presentation, a big hand to you. And uh, always you have been forthcoming and standing by the needs of India on many occasions. A very good friend and uh, otherwise excellent uh, administrator as you have been. And uh, again, uh, you know, highlighted several points uh, and uh, uh, integrating pulses in the our farming and cropping systems, as you said at the end, uh, for taking full advantage of the benefits that pulses offer as a group of crops. Uh, that's the message that uh, you have given. So <clears throat> I'll come back to the point, other points that you have made. So uh, profuse thanks Anyone? for joining. Uh, and uh, and making your points uh, so eloquently. And, share this and uh, now uh, uh, we will move ahead. Uh, our uh, last presentation uh, is by Dr. Ram Nair uh, from World Ways. Uh, Dr. Nair, floor is yours. Unshare. Uh, Unshare. And uh, please unshare, uh, Ali, please unshare your slides. Oh my God. And uh, okay, so now uh, Dr. Ram, please. Can you see the full screen? Yes, we can see it very well, Dr. Nair. Okay. Dr. Mahapatra, Dr. Bansal, Dr. Rajiv Ashni, my co-speakers, Dr. Sanjeev Gupta, Dr. Shane Mays, um, Mr. Ali um, Abu Saba, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to present on behalf of World Wedge on what we have done on the major and minor pulses. This is the outline of my presentation. We'll look at the global strategy, which we prepared recently on Vigna, then the International Mung Bean Improvement Network, then scaling of varieties in both Asia and Africa is on Mung Bean. Then again, the uh, value added pro project on Mung Bean in Myanmar, an African Union Mung for Iron project, and piloting of varieties in Central Asia and Tajikistan, the USAID project, then a Department of Biotechnology, Government of India project on minor pulses, and a, a World Bank project in a part in Assam, the Eastern States in India, and the way forward. So the uh, recently, uh, cro the Crop Diversity Trust asked World Wedge to lead this initiative on preparing a global strategy for the conservation and use of Vigna species. In the past, it, there was only one strategy document and that was specifically on, uh, on cowpea. So this was to uh, cover all the species in Vigna and I thank all the uh, gene bank collaborators who have been there yeah, and worked with us and, uh, yeah, and developing this uh, and developing this uh, uh, strategy. Yeah, so the key to... points include developing an international platform to support uh, small gene banks, to promote regeneration and safety duplication of Vigna collections, then uh, germplasm characterization, especially to avoid duplicate holdings, then uh, very important to preserve endangered wild species and making sure that they are, uh, there is successful pre-breeding and use of crop species, particularly to the gene pools which have been neglected. And then the um, fifth point is on strengthening in-situ conservation of Vigna genetic resources, particularly the wild crop wild relatives and connect this to the ex-situ conservation activities. So 
I think thanks very much to the, all the gene bank curators who did a great job. And this is our, uh, the gene bank in Taiwan, which holds more than 10,000 Vigna species. The International Mungbean Improvement Network is my next slide. And so for those of you know that uh, mungbean is a mandate crop of world wedge, and we have been working for, for with, uh, uh, mung bean, with mung bean for a while. And it was in 2016, we were successful in developing a network of uh, mung bean researchers, and it's called as the International Mung Bean Improvement Network, thanks to the funding by the Australian Center for International Agriculture Research. And now we are into the second phase of the network, and uh, we have got uh, support from the Sintenda Foundation for Sustainable Agriculture. We are partners from Kenya, Calro, from India, the ICR Indian Institute of Pulse Research, from Bangladesh, Bari Agriculture Research Institute, from Myanmar, the Department of Agriculture Research, from Indonesia, the Institute of Legume and Tuber Crops Institute. From Australia, we have two partners from the Department of Agriculture and Food and, as, and the University of Queensland. As part of the network, we have developed core and mini core collections. In uh, World Wedge, we have over 8,000 accessions of mung bean from which by phenotypic characterization, we developed a core collection of 1,490 accessions. And then by Genotyping uh, using SSR markers, we developed a mini core of 300 accessions, which have been um, used for genotyping as well as phenotyping studies. Here is an example wherein uh, one of the PhD students based in Taiwan did a work on uh, the GWAS on seed coat luster. And the, the network was fortunate to get a grant from Illumina, uh, the Agriculture Greater Good Program, and which has helped which is allowing us to resequence the whole genome of the mini core collection, plus the important breeding materials. This is our Roland Schaffleitner, the uh, molecular breeder based in our headquarters, and uh, Dr. Lee from the National Taiwan University, who are very much in this uh, helping the network to progress further. The mini core collection has been distributed to partners both in Asia and Africa. You can see that here, uh, seven countries in Africa have, have evaluated. So we have got now excellent data sets from all these countries highlighted here on the evaluation of these 300 or accessions. Excellent data. And we are also been looking uh, and using the high throughput phenotyping techniques. This is the PhenoSpec facility in Taiwan. And this is the Lemna Tech facility, which uh, we have collaborated with Jagdish Rane Group in the Indian, um, the National Abiotic Stress Management Center in Barmati. And excellent growth rates have been recorded on Mung Bean. The Mung Bean Mini Core has given us pleasant surprises. We have got, um, you know, the yellow mosaic disease. This is the shot taken from Myanmar. You can see that there is these yellow. Uh, spots, patches, or plots represent the susceptible ones, and you can see some of the lines or accessions have got resistance. This was a big uh, uh, like, uh, new information because the resistant varieties developed were through mutagenesis, and this is now a very important source of resistance to mungbean yellow mosaic disease, which is the most important disease, uh, major constraint, particularly in Asia. And there are uh, there is this dry root rot resistance. Again, we have got resistant lines, uh, accessions in this mini core, which is an emerging disease, in, especially when mung bean is grown as part of rice farming system. So starting to emerge in parts of Odisha in India and also in Myanmar. Uh, sticking with the fungal diseases, andrachnose is a problem. And uh, again, we have got a resistant line accession from the mini core. Um, one of the bacterial diseases, haloblight, which is um, a very, uh, you know, can be very, very damaging. You can see all the uh, lines or accessions have been decimated. This is a major problem in Australia. Again, the mini code, one of the accession showing resistance. Again, great uh, relief to our colleagues in Australia. Then cowpea aphid is a chance infestation during the, when we were evaluating the mini code. Again, we have 
one accession, a couple of accessions showing good level of resistance. Abiotic resistance also very important and uh, yeah, preliminary experiments, we found a couple of accessions showing all this result. We have also been uh, using marker assisted selection. This is a good example where we have brookits are a major storage pest and we have uh, earlier identified brookit resistant accessions which have been introduced into improved lines. And now we have developed markers and we are currently deploying them into our breeding program. So these are the caps markers were converted into SNPs and they have been now, we are doing the validation with our uh, breeding materials. In 2020, we had a meeting of our stakeholders and then uh, these product profiles were developed. So each partner, for example, uh, you can see each partner has got these uh, product profiles. So must have traits and good to have traits. So um, well, uh, just to show as an example, in Kenya, you can see that I have put this mark MIMD resistance, but I have put uh, BCMV and CMV because when we introduced the mini core and all the breeding lines into Africa, we were expecting among being yellow mosaic disease to be the major problem. But to our surprise, the big Oma virus was not an issue, but being common mosaic virus and the um, cucumber mosaic virus were the major threats. So again, highlighting the importance of uh, making sure what sort of biotic and abiotic stresses are there in each country or the region where you introduce crops. I'm happy to say that as part of the network, uh, some lines have been shortlisted for potential release. In India, here you can see two lines, in Bangladesh, three lines, and Myanmar, even uh, uh, some of the advanced breeding lines from World Wedge, as well as some ac accessions from the Miniko have been identified for potential release. And in Kenya, these two lines have high iron content also in early flowering. I'd like to invite your attention to this uh, Monk Central, which is a newsletter uh, we have uh, developed by the International Monk Bean Improvement Network. So far, we have released nine editions, and this is available on the our um, World Wedge website as well as in the ACR website. So you get recipes in on in each edition. Well, varieties development is great, but then scaling up of varieties. Here, this is from the UK, now called FCDO. We have been scaling varieties and good agriculture practices, both in Asia and Africa. In Tajikistan, two varieties, Mawurid and Mwachara were released. And in Kenya, Karimbo, uh, Nididu, Tosha, and Biashara, these varieties were released. These, these varieties, when I visited Kenya in 2011, they were growing varieties which were 90 days duration. And these varieties are early maturing, 60 days duration, big seed size, made a big difference. And uh, Karmi Rial, the partner from Calro, she did an excellent job in having a participatory evaluation when the testing of varieties were done at earlier stages. Now, uh, excellent adoption is happening. And um, I'm also happy to say that Two varieties were identified by the Ta uh, Tanzanian Agriculture Research Institute, Tari Moon 1, Tari Moon 2, uh, released this year, and uh, hopefully the seed production will also go in parallel. This project, Actium, accelerating the competitiveness and inclusiveness of the Hmong Bean value chain in Myanmar, is a classic project in which all the stakeholders are there. You have got the farmers, you've got the, the researchers, you have got the Stakeholders are uh, important here in this case is we have got Ever Special, which is Europe's largest sprouting company. And we have, have uh, like in the past, this company has been importing from both China and Myanmar, but the quality of the material was in question. So this pro uh, uh, project funded by Danida has been a very good one to bring, to, uh, bring about good agriculture practices and uh, I'm happy to say that um, the advanced breeding lines shared by uh, World Wedge, AVMUs 1688 and 1690, been promising and most preferred by farmers. Very important, this particular line, 1688, have been tested and found to be an excellent sprouting quality one. So 
uh, so we will have at least two varieties, one for the sprouting market and one for the grain market. And we are encouraging uh, because uh, Myanmar is an excellent country which exports lots of mung bean, but we are encouraging the, uh, the growers as well as consumers in Myanmar to consume mung bean uh, because of its uh, nutritive value. This is uh, another project on mung bean called Mung for Iron, funded by the African Union. Here it is led by NARO in Uganda. We have partners, Calro, as well as Tari in Tanzania. The World Wedge uh, identified uh, lines of mung bean with capacity to have higher uptake of iron when the soil available iron is small. And these, these lines were crossed into improved lines and we have shared these uh, the lines developed with partners. And here you can see the, the, the dramatic increase in these, the high iron content in these, uh, of these lines in the different countries. Moving on to India, this is a project, um, the genetic enhancement of minor pulses is a project funded by the government of India Department of Biotechnology led by the Institute of Life Sciences Bhuvaneshwar in Odisha, which is uh, Eastern state in India. And in this project, there are different uh, legumes. Uh, and uh, the component which we were involved with is, is led by the National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources. And we have been working on two crops, Urdvin, Vigna, Mungo, and the whole collection, over 2,000 accessions of, of Urdvin in the NBPGR. We evaluated for two years. Excellent information, you can see that the tremendous variation you can see in terms of leaf shape, the growth habit, the pot color. And we had a chance uh, in incidence of androgynous resistance, I mean, androgynous disease. And you can see that uh, two uh, accessions are highly resistant and 71 resistant. And these have been holding on after further testing. So very uh, excellent uh, uh, you know, outcome from a breeding point. And, um, the other crop which we have been working in as part of this project is horse gram acrotyloma uniflorum. Again, uh, this one we were given the um, uh, the uh, the task of evaluating the core collection of developed uh, from this project at 300 accessions along with checks, and again enormous variation. And uh, uh, we have uh, shared. Uh, DNA samples and phenotypic data and a lot of work is happening and more publications and good varieties will come out of this program, I'm sure. We have also been uh, working in Central Asia. This is a, the example in the USAID project. This is uh, the, one of the mung bean varieties which were tested well in collaboration with Punjab University Chandigarh and the control conditions showing good level of heat tolerance and this is performing well, uh, very well in Tajikistan at the temperatures going up to 45 degrees Celsius, but, but it is under irrigated conditions. So, but again, very hot, but uh, performing well. They are very happy. The Tajik Academy of Agriculture Sci Sciences also identified an Urdubin line, which is also performing well and which is submitted for potential release. And when we develop varieties, we look for projects like the World Bank Apart project in Assam, where we can use these mature technologies. And there, they, uh, the, the project wanted would be in line. So we have shared the yellow mosaic disease, brookit resistant would be in lines, and shared with the national partner in that project, the Assam Agriculture University. They are doing well. You can see the pots are uh, at the top of the plant, unlike. Um, you know, usually the pots in black wood bean is, you know, hidden in the canopy. So we have got some good plants uh, which are uh, prom uh, performing very well. Now, a couple of last few slides on the way forward. I think conservation of wild related species and very important utilization in pre breeding and breeding programs are very vital. Then uh, developing markers, high density markers, and pan genomics. And uh, Rajiv Vashni, who, has, who is in the panel, is, has been working a great deal on this. And the, my previous speakers emphasized the importance of 
improving productivity. Just in case of mung bean, the global productivity is only 700 kilograms per hectare. But in Australia, you get uh, 2.5 tons per hectare. See the, the yield gap, even in a, a crop like mung bean. So uh, right varieties, very important to have good agriculture practices, good agriculture practices. 60 days variety, if you do good agriculture practices, you get two tons easily. And very important to make sure the varieties fit into the cropping system, whether it is a monocropping system, whether it is following a, in between rice and wheat, or if it is a following the maize or intercropping with maize or sorghum or with another legume, very important to have uh, discussions with the communities and make sure uh, these are implemented on a system basis. Another important point which I'd like to point out is the development of regional ports. So, I, uh, so these are regional ports I'd like to call as these legume fruits are called as ports. Obviously, that is why I would like to call them regional ports because we need regional or local champions to promote minor pulses or else the minor pulses will remain minor forever. So conservation of efforts at regional level, raising awareness, even through inclusion of seeds in home garden seed kits. We could have uh, these seed kits of these uh, minor pulses in, ho in home garden seed kits, which will help to create awareness or even in school gardens and then uh, get uh, interested. And then very important that the seed production has been mentioned by previous speakers and it's not that easy that it's private sector coming on board, but you could have the community business model, which is working well in some countries. In Kenya, just we had some uh, information from our um, collaborator that about 90, 80 to 90% of the mung bean seed is through the informal seed system. So we cannot ignore that. So how can we strengthen the informal seed sector? And very important. So I, last month I was in Benin. We have the uh, World Veggies has got an alliance with uh, the uh, of the private sector in Africa called the African. Okay. Vegetable okay. Can you please wind up? Yes, uh, African Vegetable Breeding Consortium, in which private sector partners are there, and there is great interest even crop like mung bean. So this is my last slide. So uh, we need to develop value-added products, good recipes, <laughs> highlighting the nutritional and nutraceutical values. So these are the wide range of products developed even in crop like mung bean and acknowledging the donors and the partners and thank you for your attention. One, one. Okay, thank you very much uh, Ram for another important, interesting, important presentation, highlighting partnership, highlighting world waste work in various countries, including India, and contributing to the uh, development of pulses, uh, germplasm uh, use, uh, leading to uh, bridging yield gaps, and so on and so forth. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, it's, uh, now the session is open for uh, discussion. Uh, this is the general discussion session. All participants are welcome. So uh, anyone wishes to express their views and provide comments, uh, so or even query, uh, you know, whatever you would like to raise. So most welcome. Yeah, Dr. Acharya from this side, Dr. Mahapatra. Yeah, please, Dr. Acharya, please. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. You know, all the presentations have been very good, I appreciate. And especially the one from ICARDA, you know, where even the, the management issues were discussed. And uh, now Dr. Nair, see how the mitigating of iron deficiency showed the dramatized increase in production and productivity. The yield levels, they see the, the 2.5 tons in Australia and 700 kg in Africa. You know, in India, how long we will continue to say that uh, the pulses are grown under infant conditions? 
see the condition these days in the country, you know, the Uttar Pradesh, the Bihar, the Rajasthan, so much of water is there, but there is no water then we, then we need it. So my point is that why can't we concentrate on these issues also? Then the second point is that the soils are to be enriched. You know, our soils are deficient. More than 40% of the soils are deficient in zinc. More than 33% of the soils are deficient in iron. And not only the micronutrients, but also, also of the major nutrients. You know, in the pulses require the phosphorus, sulfur, and all those. The organics, there is a shortage of uh, organics. If we enrich the soils, you know, provide, you know, good fresh vegetables to the children, good milk, the eggs, fish, and other things, rather than, you know, concentrate on the fortification of the process. Yeah. So you know, this, this, this is what I had been discussing. No, no, no. So, so this is, this is the farming system based approach, you know, the, the livestock, if soil is rich, you will have the better grasses. You will have the better quality of the cereals and the pulses. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Masundali, can I make? Yeah, yeah, please. Sir, uh, the kind of achievements that we made in pulse production, productivity, and area expansion, it is indeed remarkable, as Dr. Gupta has very nicely presented. And I believe in the coming five years, we should be a pulse surplus nation. But uh, if we look to the other aspect, that is regional aspects. When we see north, central, south, and east, we find, okay, central and south, excellent. North comes number two. But once we look to the East India, the situation is still bleak. In fact, the production and productivity of pulses in this region is quite low. And that really requires focus. Now, uh, there are two minor pulses. Since, of course, it was for major and minor pulses, in fact, Uradbin and Mugbin, we, talk, we don't take as a minor pulses, right? The other mi minor pulses, what I say, that is grass pea and uh, rice bean. Actually, rice bean under our condition national system, it comes under an uh, underutilized network project. I should say the underexploited, it's not underutilized, underexploited network project. And Vigna Ambilata, that is rice bean, has a great potential. It has a higher productivity, a very high biomass, uh, could be also used as a fodder and uh, also uh, for green manuring. But the problem is of the quality aspects. I think there is a need to focus on the quality aspects of uh, Vigna Ambilata and also uh, its duration. I think if we are able to address these two aspects, it could be one of the potential crop in the Eastern India. Grass peas, of course, uh, ICADA is also working on this. Our national program has also now focused on the, um, uh, this uh, crop. And we have varieties now which have got very low deck content and productivity improvement is going on. So I think these two minor pulses, they need uh, more focus. And as Dr. Acharya mentioned, in fact, overall, we can enhance the productivity still a lot by practicing uh, precision agriculture, in, which will include nutrients, moisture, and other aspects also. So I think uh, these are the things which will certainly lead to a very high productivity. I think we should be able, as I said, we should be able to be a pulse surplus nation in coming five years. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very valuable uh, comments. Dr. Venkat Swarlo. Uh, sir, uh, thank you, sir. Sir, what we see in our country is that, you know, in the historically pulses have been very major component of the intercropping systems, you know. But of late, sir, we see uh, due to harvesting problem and increasing mechanization of the, you know, crops, sir, uh, we don't, we see that intercropping is uh, unfortunately on the decline. So I think uh, this is something which we need to see. This is one point. 
and second point is uh, many of the speakers they mentioned about the ongoing breeding efforts but none of them mentioned about the scope for any the you know breakthrough technologies like genome editing and all if at all is there any scope uh, at least in future these are the two points i thought i must uh, have it. thank you thank you thank you very much next anybody else dr deshmukh dr deshmukh thank you sir uh sir as uh, dr ali mentioned uh central india has definitely done uh, better in chickpea during last uh, one decade or so uh even pgnp is okay uh, but what i see that uh, the area and the production productivity of mung bean and urad bean in maharashtra particularly has decreased say tremendously uh, because maybe because of the change in climate uh the present day varieties uh, do well when they are planted in june itself if the sowing is delayed to july uh, then there is a reduction tremendous reduction in yield also these crops are caught in rains nowadays uh, what i feel that uh, as uh, dr nair has shown some good lines probably there is a scope to uh, try some more lines uh, improved lines uh we different sowing dates uh, in a state like maharashtra in kharip uh there is little scope for introduction of these crops in summer season in a state like maharashtra because the irrigation is a problem in uh, during summer months but in kharip these crops grow very well and also play very important role in cropping system particularly in rotation with rabi sorghum uh when these crops are grown in uh, kharif they are harvested in two months and then in september rabi jowar is sown but nowadays we are lacking in that particular cropping pattern and there is shift uh, uh, maybe the area uh, particularly under these two crops is getting reduced day by day so that is what i would like to suggest that we need some efforts to introduce some better lines or develop maybe better lines which can be planted date and having register to yellow hen mosaic and uh, powdery mildew because powdery mildew is again a very important problem in a state like maharashtra thank you sir thank you thank you very much anybody else last one last intervention uh, sir uh, can i sir can i ask a question sir yeah, myself yeah. Uh, cs yeah. mohanty okay ओके सर सर थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर सच नाइस एंड इंफॉर्मेटिव सर आई मे हेलो अपार्ट फ्रॉम दीज मेजर लेग्यूम्स सो देर आर सम लेग्यूम्स दैट व्हिच आर रेस्ट्रिक्टेड टू सम ऑफ द पॉकेट्स सम स्पेसिफिक पॉकेट्स ऑफ इंडियन एंड अफ्रीकन सब कॉन्टिनेंट लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल डिफरेंट बीन कैटेगरीज so is there any initiative like the mainstreaming of uh, those in a uh, broader perspective as well as uh, apart from this uh, nutritional fortification uh, so there are some many anti nutrients also those who are uh, infested with all these legumes so as per uh, rightly uh, told by uh, my earlier uh, speaker so uh, there are lot of uh, genomic technology like for example genome editing tools are there so can we go for uh, this uh, anti nutrient uh, uh, okay. uh, by editing some of the lines so this initiative uh, okay okay uh, ali ali you would like to respond uh no actually i i would like to maybe just wake one last comment if we have a, a window through the world food prize i think we should send a strong message about the potential future role of pulses to transform the food systems and i think uh, it's a message about the increased need for increased investment in research to be able to actually achieve that and promote learning across the globe and i think india has enormous uh, knowledge to offer in that space so i just want to suggest we craft a message along this line and make it among our uh, you know uh, among our messages to the world food. thank you very much okay yeah thank you see you. Yes, you know, I have only one thing that you know, you know, somebody says that genetic, you know, genomic editing. Uh, 
I think we have done a good job as far as grasp is concerned, where we wanted to silence this pathway of, you know, you know, order, you know production. And that has been done in association with Queensland University under this, you know, uh, GIC project, uh, you know, with GIC partners. So I think, you know, we have done a good job and then we have some of the lines, but then before that, we want to test it across the, you know, lab and then you know locations only then we will claim this you know having zero order lines through genome editing okay know. okay thank you could I make, mother, if you have one line if you can say at the end could i make a comment please yeah just quickly one line because we don't have time one line i was i was just wondering whether we have got any thought uh, with respect to the Productions in our own country, where we are also concerned with the quality of the straw. When we are talking about product quality, the quality of the straw becomes very important to us, because these are the crops which are supplementing for our transforming agriculture with respect to the livestock. Yeah, yeah. I think we need to have some thought also being given to the quality of the straw which is being produced. Okay, okay. Well said. Thank you very much. So. Uh, so due to due to paucity of time, so uh, I'm sorry that uh, we will not be able to take it further uh, uh, with regard to uh, discussion. So uh, please provide your uh, comments in writing. Uh, so we would be extremely happy to uh, uh, take note of those and include those in our. Uh, uh, minutes uh, of final uh, proceedings that we prepare and also include that in the form of recommendations. So to summarize very briefly, uh, I have uh, four or five minutes. Uh, very briefly, uh, uh, what was evident uh, from the presentation was uh, the uh, kind of uh, development that has taken place during particularly past 10 years. Uh, in, uh, uh, in production uh, and consumption of pulses, that was very, very significant. And Dr. Gupta highlighted this in the context of India, uh, how we have increased our production as well as consumption. So that's very, very important. Uh, obviously, uh, variety development and all that, that that has contributed, but also the policies of governments uh, uh, that has uh, made significant impacts. The other point, which is uh, uh, very, very important, and it was quite evident, uh, is uh, the international centers, uh, the CGIR uh, institution, ICADA, mm -hmm. uh, ICRISAT, Worldways, uh, and they have also uh, contributed very, very significantly uh, in improving pulses, taking pulses to the field, uh, uh, in uh, making impacts uh, in the process, uh, uh, not only in India, but also uh, globally. Uh, examples were uh, cited, whether it is in Africa, uh, Central Asia, uh, in uh, South Asia, for instance, in Bangladesh, Myanmar, uh, several examples were cited. So okay. contributions of these centers uh, all the ICRISAT, ICADA, uh, okay. and Worldways uh, have, have been quite significant. So, so that was uh, very evident. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm sure uh, this, uh, this, uh, this kind of suppose not to do that. I don't know who is uh, making this noise, but uh, mute them. Uh, so, so this is uh, very important, but what was actually highlighted is the partnership. So partnership made the difference. Partnership of uh, CG centers, international centers with the national government and national organizations, uh, you know, was very crucial. And that helped uh, in promoting uh, pulses in a big way. Uh, uh, germplasm paid, pay, played a very key role, and that was quite evident. Uh, mention was made that we must conserve uh, uh, you know, wild relatives and make use of uh, these germplasm more and more, uh, keeping in mind uh, demand to delivery. What was highlighted by Ali 
that demand to delivery is very, very important. Uh, and uh, uh, keeping in mind the product profile, the market requirements, uh, the trade, uh, I, uh, my light was made with regard to, uh, you know, uh, moon bean sprout trade, for instance, uh, or for that matter, uh, other trades which were highlighted. So, so the market, uh, you know, trades uh, need to be really kept in mind. Germplasm need to be utilized. More and more, uh, the gene banks are full of this germplasm. Core collections have been made. Many cores have been made. And uh, while conserving them is uh, one side, it's a great work. But utilizing them is another challenge and need to really utilize to have climate resilience, have more of uh, yield and breaking yield ceiling and so on and so forth. Many things were highlighted and biofortification was also highlighted in addition to mechanical harvesting. Plant type uh, is very, very important and uh, breeding for that is equally important and uh, using new tools and techniques which was highlighted at the end and Dr. Gupta has also highlighted and we need to really use those in addition to genomics, which has been actually uh, you know, done uh, elaborately. Uh, Dr. Rajiv has really made significant contributions in this area. They were all orphan crops, neglected mm -hmm. crops. Now they are so rich with the kind of genomic resources and information. And we need to really congratulate Rajiv on this occasion to making this big difference. And the whole world is now uh, you know, starting to work on those. And some of the varieties in chickpea which have been released here is very, very important. So gene editing, which was also mentioned, uh, need to be taken advantage of. India has actually uh, put right kind of guidelines and SOPs in place. And I believe that we should be able to take full advantage of gene editing to modify plant types, plant, you know, plant architecture, and also bring in other desirable traits in relation, relation to demand. Uh, what is there in the market? Uh, you know, uh, what is desirable in the market and then breed accordingly. So that's what, what was highlighted. And similarly, uh, what was also mentioned that we have to integrate pulses elaborately in the cropping system and farming system. And along with the precision agriculture and appropriate good agricultural practices, uh, whether it is intercropping, whether it is, uh, you know, solo uh, so cropping uh, or, or uh, uh, otherwise, uh, so we have to increase productivity and breeze yield gaps, which is existing, and enhance farmers' income by way of integrating them in our uh, intercropping systems. And that was uh, there in the past, and recently we have actually, uh, you know, forgotten it. Uh, that is very significantly reduced. And uh, anti-nutritional factor reduction is very, very important, and gene editing can play a very significant role. And similarly, soil pro properties were talked about, and I believe we should be able to address those in the management <clears throat> and as a part of precision agriculture and part of, uh, you know, uh, in the system mode of operation. Minor pulses were highlighted. I think uh, two of the points with Dr. Masubali made, uh, grass pea as well as uh, other uh, minor crops, uh, including uh, 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 rice bean, for instance, which he highlighted. So tremendous potential, they have specific drawbacks and you should be able to really address those using new technologies and bring in, uh, you know, uh, they, uh, the, bring those to the uh, large scale cropping uh, and then in the process, uh, take full advantage of that. Uh, certainly rice fallow uh, uh, is one area which is highlighted and uh, uh, making use of that uh, area which is available to us. Uh, say in India, which was highlighted is that either uh, uh, lentil or chickpea, uh, which can be grown, I believe uh, it has to be demand-based. And in India, for instance, uh, pigeon pea and lentil uh, are imported. They are in more demand. I believe in rice fallows, they are to be promoted, uh, not chickpea. And that's the message we receive uh, from the presentation. Uh, uh, and as I say, that awareness creation is very, very important. And I believe we should be able to really do that. Uh, uh, there is, uh, uh, you know, uh, a great potential of pulses as Ali highlighted at the end. And uh, uh, it requires to be highlighted, uh, emphasized again and again uh, through uh, World Food Prize Foundation. Uh, we should globally, uh, uh, you know, highlight and uh, focus more on pulse cultivation as well as consumption. And very importantly, uh, I know messaging with regard to enhanced funding for pulses research. 
uh, pulses development for scaling pulses, scaling up their production uh, and consumption. That's very, very important along with our NIS uh, creation. And I believe that, uh, you know, uh, with uh, today's program, uh, with all your viewpoints which are presented, and uh, only a few points I have taken the form of summary, and uh, the time is off, and I should stop here and profusely thank all the speakers and also all those who participated in discussion and attended this meeting. Uh, you know, uh, and uh, thanks to Rajiv very specifically for uh, 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 you know initiating this. Of course, formal vote of thanks would be uh, by uh, Dr. Bansal. So uh, for, uh, from my side, thank you very much. Thanks to all of you. Dr. Bansal, please. Yeah, thank you very much. And um, well, we are at the end of uh, this particular virtual workshop. And uh, I'm very happy uh, that uh, the two organizations, the National Academy of Agricultural Sciences and the World Food Prize Foundation together, first time, you know, organized this virtual workshop around pulses, you know, involved in food security, nutritional security, as well as sustainable development, both major and minor pulses. So at the outset, I, in fact, behalf of uh, the Academy, congratulate both these organizations and thank them profusely, you know, for, for coming forward and, and, you know, playing a big role in organizing this virtual workshop. And when I talk of the National Academy of Agricultural Sciences, I must thank, you know, our honorable president, Dr. Taloshan Mahapatra, uh, who himself is a world-renowned scientist in the area of genomics, uh, and who has been earlier, as you all know, the director general of the Indian Council of Agricultural Research and the former secretary to government of India of Department of Agriculture Research and Education. And he always takes large amount of interest in, in guiding us through in organizing such virtual workshops. And it took only a few seconds, minutes for him to approve, you know, such uh, a program organized in collaboration with the World Food Prize, you know, foundation. And, and, and uh, secondly, I'm very thankful uh, too, on behalf of the Academy to Professor Rajiv Warshne, um, who has, has been already, in fact, talked about by almost all the speakers, including our Honorable President. His contribution is so very well recognized in the area of pulses globally, you know, including release of varieties, not only in India, also for African regions. And I'm very thankful to you, Rajiv, uh, for making this happen in a very short time. Actually, within a few days of time, we were able to chalk out the whole program with the support and support of um, Ms. Netali, uh, from, from the World Food Prize Foundation. I'm thankful to you both, you know, and, and of course to Rajiv Washne, first, who is a, our foreign secretary, you know, from, from the Murdoch University of Australia. And uh, then I thank, uh, uh, in our academy, we have our uh, other guidance coming from people like Vice President we have, Secretary Mr. Dr. Joshi. Uh, we have our own Executive Council members, the Secretary H, Dr. Saxena, and all the team. And I'm very thankful to, in fact, in our own team here, the academy to Mr. Chitesh, um, you know, Jessing and, and Mr. Krishna. But more importantly, a special thanks to all the learned speakers, the distinguished speakers who, in fact, gave us an opportunity that these different organizations like ICAR, you know, ICRISET, ICARDA, or the World Wedge came together, you know, to discuss these various avenues we have forward, you know, looking avenues, you know, for the pulses, you know, production and improvement at, at the global level. And, and uh, as has been also pointed out, you know, by um, by our honorable president that I think at the end, we must try to make an action plan and, and, and develop certain set of recommendations. And I would request Dr. Rajiv Varshne if could come forward, if together can compile, you know, all these, you know, resources which have been presented today, and we can even submit as a joint document, you know, both from the National Academy as well as from the World Food Prize Foundation, you know, to these organizations or, or to the global agriculture as a whole. And, uh, and these four organizations, of course, firstly, the ICAR, I'm very thankful also to uh, Dr. Himanshu Patak, who had actually you know, given his consent, but as you know, this is such an important position that he could not find time. He is busy elsewhere in another meeting, in, in you know, a regional committee meeting, um, but he sent his best wishes to all of us, and we profusely on behalf of the Academy, thank Dr. Himanshu Patak, the current Director General, ICAR, and, and the Secretary there to Government of India. And of course, I'm thankful to all the Directors General of all other you know, international institutions like ICRISET, you know, particularly the speaker, Dr. Swan Mays, and also the, you know, Directors General from ICARDA, uh, and, and also the, the World Wedge. And to continue with the speakers, Dr. Sanjeev Gupta from ICR, I'm very thankful to him, uh, followed by Mr. Ali, 
uh, who made a wonderful presentation for Micarta. I was associated with some of these programs when I was in NBPGR, particularly, you know, the kind of interspecific hybridization we did, the pre-beating work in Lentil and, and, and uh, you know, chickpea. And I'm very thankful to Micarta in general, particularly to Mr. Ali, who made this wonderful presentation today in, in this pro pro program. And also, um, I'm thankful to Mr. Dr. Ram Nair, um, who again talked about on various pulses and give good emphasis on, you know, how we can together work in this area, you know, from the world wedge. And, and I think it's time that probably ICAR or National Academy actually can play a big role in bringing all these national and international institutions together uh, to develop a kind of a roadmap, you know, or, or recommendations to move forward. And um, I'm thankful, of course, uh, again, to all the participants, you know, who made it in, in a big number, I think it was over 250, you know, participants, though the registrations went up to, as I mentioned in the beginning, informally 900, you know, but I think uh, the others must be also watching the program from the World Food Program um, Foundation, you know, uh, platform. Uh, but nevertheless, I think more than 250 participants were there. I'm thankful to all of them and thankful to all those who raised questions and queries and gave their, you know, comments to discussions. I'm very thankful to them as well. They made certainly very important points. And I think that will add value further into the whole program, which we were able to organize here at, at the National Academy. Uh, with this, I once again actually thank all of you and look forward to a set of recommendations. And as has been advised by our honorable uh, you know, president of the Academy, we will, I'm sure, come up soon with, with some kind of recommendations. And Dr. Aji Washington, we together will we'll, you know, work on it and with input from all the speakers again. And thank you to all the speakers, to all the participants, to all those who are present here today. And, and thank you once again. Thank to you. Everybody. Thanks thank to you. all of you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Vadi. Thanks, all the speakers. Thank, thank you. Thanks. Great thank event. You. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. And Dr. Varshini, sir, Rajiv, sir. Thanks to Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, our President and Secretary. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We close the program. Dr. Mahapatra, Dr. Master. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much.